Then I saw another beast rising out of the earth. It had two horns like a lamb, and it spoke like a dragon. As we have learned in previous studies, beast denotes the carnal nature. This is true of the beast which rises out of the sea, as well as this beast which rises out of the earth. And what is the difference between the sea and the earth? In his writing, from the candlestick to the throne, Part 154, Brother E.B. gives this enlightening information. I would now draw your attention to the fact that the expression, I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, is literally in the Greek. I saw another wild beast ascending out of the earth. John did not say, I saw a beast come up or ascend as a limited, one-time event, but coming up or ascending denoting a continuous action. It is ongoing. It is constantly being fulfilled. It cannot be bound by, nor does it predict or specify, any actual historical or future event. Instead, the beast is ascending. He is always ascending out of the earth realm of the soul of man. As I have pointed out many times before in these messages, nearly all things in the book of Revelation take place in one of three symbolical realms, heaven, earth, and sea. The earth is the symbol of a realm higher than the sea, but lower than heaven, an in-between realm which at its highest peak kisses heaven, and at its lowest level embraces the sea, yet is of itself neither heavenly nor of the sea. The sea, as we have seen, comprises the masses of restless, surging, sinning, clamoring men who live only and completely after the unrestrained lusts of their flesh, while heaven comprises those seated together in the ascended Christ, who walk only and completely after the Spirit. Those that dwell upon the earth are a moral class, religious folk, with many upright citizens of the community and church-going Christian people in their ranks. But these, while not overtly wicked, are not spiritual either, but in most aspects of their thinking and daily living, mind earthly things. They do not wallow in the lusts of the flesh of the body realm, neither do they walk in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus in the spirit. Their lives are lived out of the earthly realm of the soul. Based on my own studies, I have come to believe that the soul denotes the self. For we are told in Ezekiel 18.4, that the soul who sins shall die. Further proof is found in the following. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life or soul will lose it, but whoever loses his life or soul for my sake will find it. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? As noted, the word life is the same word rendered soul in the very next sentence. And what was Jesus teaching in these passages? Deny yourself, identifying our life or soul as the self. With this understanding, we can see that the beast or carnal nature first arises from the sea or unregenerate nature within. Then this same nature begins to manifest from the earth or soulish realm of the self. To speak of the soul is to speak of the self, and to speak of the self is to speak of the soul. The soul is the essence of the earth from which we were derived. In agreement, we read the following. Thus it is written, the first man Adam became a living being, the last Adam became a life-giving spirit. But it is not the spiritual that is first but the natural, 
and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven. As Paul describes, the first man, Adam, who represents a living being or soul, is the natural man, from the earth, a man of dust. In the Genesis parable, and in keeping with Ezekiel 18.4, the first man, Adam, as well as all of us, die due to our inability to discern the things of the Spirit of God. This is by God's design. As for the dust, please consider. So the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle and more than every beast of the field. On your belly you shall go, and you shall eat dust all the days of your life. And dust shall be the serpent's meat. Here is where the serpent comes in. The serpent eats dust. It is the serpent's meat, which equates to the will of the flesh. What does the serpent represent? The haughty spirit of man. Remember, the idea of rising or coming up denotes a continuous action and points to man's constant efforts to ascend over others due to pride, the inordinate love of the self. What is quite telling about this beast is the fact that it has two horns like a lamb yet speaks like a dragon. Revelation 12.9 clearly identifies the dragon as that called the devil and Satan, so despite its Christ-like appearance posed by two horns like a lamb, this soulish entity is a deceiver. This is confirmed by Revelation 13.13 13 and 14, where we read, It performs great signs, even making fire come down from heaven to earth in front of people, and by the signs that it is allowed to work in the presence of the beast. It deceives those who dwell on earth. Unlike the beast which rises out of the sea, the beast of the earth is clearly identified later in Revelation. Please consider the following and note where I have placed the scripture references. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. As shown, the beast which comes up out of the earth speaks of the false prophet. By no means is this an individual. But just like the beast which rises out of the sea, it represents a collective entity which, like its counterpart, denotes an essence that arises out of carnality. That being said, carnality and self are synonymous, for it is pride, the inordinate love of the self, which draws us into carnality and is responsible for all the suffering we see on this planet. So who is this false prophet? The Bible does not leave us guessing. Let's go to the book of Jeremiah. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? The greatest deceiver is the human heart. In part two, we will look further into the beast of the earth, where there is more to be considered. <laughs>